good morning and it is secure when we recognize that our God who is good is present in all our mornings whatever lies ahead in our day. My name is Warren Tranter and welcome to Christ Church Reflections. It was Aristotle who said that our hands are the tools above all tools. And from the outset, I encourage you to take a few moments now to study these incredible members of your body. Consider their dexterity. Move your fingers. Grip something tightly. Gently touch your face. Lift a biro and notice how skillfully you guide the pen to form letters. Watch them tying your shoelaces, sending texts or no negotiating the contours as you apply lipstick. Not my forte. Now consider their flexibility, the unending application to multiple daily tasks, both simple and complex, from lifting a cup of tea to threading cotton through the eye of a needle, to sensitive skills of the surgeon as he performs a delicate procedure. Think of the person who is blind and re reads uh, braille with their fingers, or the one who has hearing loss and communicates artistically through sign language. Recall watching your favorite cricket team the batsmen, bowler, wicketkeeper and fielders observe their hands in relation to the ball and with a smile recall last week at the Cricket 100 the young man at Headingley who caught the ball driven for a six into the stands tumbling over the seats and then catching his mobile phone as it exited his pocket. Having just become grandparents, one of the things we marvel at is seeing baby Joshua's hands, pink and beautifully formed, wriggling and gripping our finger. And it is a fact that a newborn baby's grasp is so strong it can hold its entire body weight whilst hanging from its arms. Chris, keep putting the washing out on the line and leave Joshua inside. I look again at my hands and think of the decades of work they have done. Whilst other things have worn out, gone to the scrap heap, been replaced or updated, these amazing adroit instruments, vulnerable to a Stanley knife, keep performing 24-7. Little wonder the Psalms exclaimed that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. God apparently thinks hands are very important, as the word hand appears 1,466 times in the Bible and in the plural, hands, 462 times. God made hands and placed his stamp of approval upon them. He gave each hand a unique identity. No two sets of fingerprints are the same. God created our hands to do things, but he also uses our hands to carry out his will. I'm a great believer in the need to learn skills of hand and mind. Going into the workplace setting from school, college or university teaches us so much about ourselves, those who, work, we are, those who we work alongside, how to deal with difficult people and face challenging tasks. Having our faith tested in an environment that may be antagonistic 
or ambivalent towards Jesus, but where we can demonstrate integrity in our practices as a Christian. I have always been encouraged by the knowledge that Jesus was a grafter. He served an apprenticeship under his earthly father, Joseph. And while Mark 6 refers to him as being a carpenter, the Greek word tekton covers the whole area of building. They were skilled craftsmen, much in demand at the time of Jesus as they are today, and well paid, as many projects were underway in places near Nazareth, such as Sephorus, a short walking distance from his home, where Herod was building a 4,000-seater amphitheatre, grand villas and bathhouses. Jesus got his hands dirty. He rubbed shoulders with the artisans. He worked under foremen, witnessed unfairness and dishonesty, heard their builders' language, knew their background and understood their religious misgivings. Yet back in that day, as today, we see prejudice and class distinction. Jesus' hometown friends and acquaintances couldn't believe that this familiar local boy had become a great teacher and prophet. In the course of their complaints, they said, Mark 6, 2-3, When the Sabbath came, Jesus began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were amazed. Where did this man get these things, they asked. What's this wisdom that has been given to him? What are these remarkable miracles he is performing? Isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son and the brother of James, Joseph, Judas and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offence at him. I wonder if you have noticed that a number of Jesus' parables take place at construction sites. How much of Jesus' personal experience might reflect in these parables? Did he help construct a fence, dig a wine press, or build a tower in the vineyard, and observed the strained relationships between the landowner and the tenants in Mark 12, 1 to 12? Did one of his customers run out of money halfway through building a tower and leave an unpaid debt to Jesus? Luke fourteen twenty eight to 30. Did he remember Joseph's teaching him how to dig a foundation all the way to solid rock so that the building can withstand wind and flood? Matthew seven twenty four to 27. Did he ever hire assistants and have to face grumbling about pay? Matthew 20, 1 to 16, and pecking order, Mark 9, 33 to 37. Was he ever supervised by a manager who asked him to join in a scheme to defraud the owner, Luke 16, 1 to 16? In short, how much of the wisdom in Jesus' parables were developed through his experience as a tradesman in the first century economy? If nothing else, Remembering Jesus' experience as a builder can help us to see the parables in a more concrete light. But today, be encouraged that all your training, practical and mental skills, can be used by God to bless and enrich others. All that is put into your hands can either be grasped for your own use or they can be distributed and have a multiplying effect in showing God's love in Jesus. In conclusion, I ask you to look at your hands again. Hold them in front of you. Observe you have four fingers on each hand and a thumb. In practical terms, your fingers are weak, but with a thumb, they become strong. Try working without your thumb. See how awkward it is to pick up anything without it. Make God your thumb in life. Know his supporting and covering strength. On your own, you're like fingers, weak. I've chosen a lovely song 
One Pair of Hands, sung by Elvis Presley, that captures all those Jesus touched with his hands. And those hands, through love, were nailed to a cross to bring us eternal life. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we thank you for our hands and the daily tasks they perform. We praise you for the example of Jesus, who with his hands contributed to the physical environment through building the new and restoring the old. We are moved by your example of reaching out to those in distress and touching them those who are hungry and feeding them, those who are young and blessing them. You showed us how to use our hands to lift up the fallen and the needy, to open our hands to share all that you have given us with others. May we not be tight-fisted, proud or distant, but may we lift our hands and faces in worship to acknowledge your loving generosity that reaches out to everyone without exception. Forgive us when we fall short and enable us to be aware of all those who come within our influence and presence. We ask this in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May the Lord bless you and put your hands to good work today.